All right, I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in the video today. Today, we have the new Predator 5000 that came from Harbor Freight, okay? We're gonna do the Cummins versus the Predator generator. And we're gonna test it on amperage and sound. And then also, one of the things you'll notice about these generators is, if you look at these Cummins right here, these are 3,700 running watts and 4,500 peak watts, where this new 5000, of course, steps that up a little bit. It's 3,900 running watts and 5,000 peak watts. Now the difference for me is I run two 15,000 BTU air conditioners. One of these really struggles to run both those air conditioners. A lot of times it'll it'll um, go down on me. So I'm excited to see if this 5,000 has just a little bit more power to run two 15s. Now most campers have a 15 and a 13.5, so these will run them just fine. But let's get this box open. Let's take a look at this one. Let's run some tests and we can actually test the amperage going into these generators because I can adjust my amperage one amp at a time as we load them up. So that's what we're going to do today and we're going to check the sound levels on them. So stay tuned. Let's get this thing open. One of the definite benefits about the Predator 5000 also is that it is dual fuel, which means we can run on propane. It comes with the regulator in the box, screwed to your propane tank. It's got a quick connect on the front. We're running propane. We've got the oil funnel to add the oil to it. Um, in here you have a key fob, which the other generators also have a key fob. And this one comes with different jets for different elevations. So if you live in Colorado, you're up in the mountains, um, very nice of them to include that. Usually you have to order those specifically for your elevation. Um, 12 volt charging cable for charging your batteries and spark plug wrench. Okay, so this one also has a suitcase handle. It's got a lock and unlock on your wheels. It's really nice. The old ones are metal and they rattle. So it's nice that that one's plastic. Gotta get some oil put in this thing real quick and get the battery hooked up. We will be ready to run. There we go. And here's our battery plug right here. So all we have to do is plug this in. And then here's your oil fill right here. Okay, so I got a propane tank, just screwed our, fitting, our regulator on it. And then if you notice right here, I haven't put any gas in the generator. We've added the oil, we've hooked up the battery. So here's the quick connect for the propane. We're gonna go ahead and run it on propane first. So this will be its first startup. We'll turn the power on. And it's already selected to propane right here. And then so what we're gonna do is go ahead and hit the start button. Probably having to get the air out of the line, so. these products but I run the stable and everything and then I run ethanol free fuel in all of my fuel cans and I still exercise my equipment I try to take it out and start it you know once every other month or something just to make sure everything's good and then you know you run it to the off storage you let it run out of gas so the carburetors dry that's the best way to store these and then when you use it 
you introduce the gasoline, start it up, you know. Um, don't do that every time you shut it off, but you know, if you're putting it up, you know it's gonna be sitting. I run it to off storage, let it die, and then turn the power off. So now we've got fuel in both of them. They're ready to run. I'm gonna put a little more run time on this Predator, let it uh, break in a little bit, and then we'll put a small load on it and work our way up. It's just a different sound. And you can hear both of them. That one's a little bit deeper. That one's a little smoother. But overall, pretty comparable. So here's the first gas startup. We flipped it to gas. We're letting the carburetor fill up. Turn the power on. Push, you'll see the light. And then push it. Okay, so we're inside the camper. We're gonna go and we're gonna set for a max of 10 amps on the inlet. So we'll go to my menu here. See, input current limit is 10 amps. So we're not gonna pull more than 10 amps out of the generator right now. It's a nice small load to break it in. Let's see how that does. Okay, so just for reference on RV load, I'm running one of my 15,000 BTU air conditioners here in the camper. And, you know, a few lights, refrigerator, stuff like that, but we're not running two airs. Um, you know, everything's powered up. And we'll look at the screen real quick. At 10 amps, you can see that we're pulling about 1,100 watts off of the generator right now. That grid is our generator outside. And our total load is 1675. So you can see we're pulling from our lithiums pull about 35 amps off the batteries right now. So what we're looking for when we're gonna up the amperage, it's gonna turn that around and start putting power back in the battery or we'll stop using the battery. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to menu. You can see it's assisting right now. Let's up that generator to 15 amps outside. Quiet, quiet generator. So at 15 amps, it's like right at 1200 watts. Running one AC unit. We're still using power out of the batteries. So let's take it up to 20 amps. Remember wearing our 30 amp plug out there. Menu. Heard the generator ramp up a little bit outside and now you can see we are stacking power back into the battery let's walk out here it's a little bit louder and i've got the muffler facing the camper but on the front side it's pretty impressive and you can see right there Currently we're running one air conditioner, you know, the power in the camper, all that, pretty much no problem. And we're actually charging my lithium right now. So we're pulling 2200 watts out of the generator, 2230, somewhere in that area right now. 32 amps right there. Now that generator offers more 
power in the 110, but that's one of the things about not having a 50 amp service is you can only pull the 30 amps. So will this generator cover a 15 K BTU and a 13.5 on a 30 amp? I think it will. Um, you can see that we're pulling 3,500 watts. We're pulling right at 30 out there. And it's even charging my batteries with the 215s running. So I do have soft starts for disclaimer. So I'm not sure it would still start two air conditioners without soft starts. But right now, from what I'm seeing, it is actually running those. And uh, that's pretty impressive. Come over here to fire up the Cummins generator. Now, technology-wise, one of the things about the Cummins is it does give you a little bit more information on the screen. It gives you your fuel level, it gives you your load percentage right here, and then it also gives you the amount of time it's gonna run until it shuts down. Uh, that was just my RV once it's starting because I don't have any power going to it and I've got the ACs on. So let's go ahead and take this. We know we're gonna pull 10 amps with this. So you can see we're at 10 amps right now. Go back to the pages. And you're gonna hear it ramp up a little bit out there. Go back to our pages. You can see we're pulling 1600 watts. Out of the 3194, we wanted to pull the whole 3200 like the Predator did. Menu. Let's take up 20. Back up to 2200 watts, roughly. Pulling the 2746. We'll take a look at it. At 25 watts, we're showing about a 75 percent load here on the gauge. not pulling the load take this up like we did with the other one to 32 and we just blew the breaker on it the overload you can see right there so we basically just lost power
Cummins versus the Predator is, is the Cummins is a good unit. Um, I've had those a couple of years. I really like them. Um, you know, for a single air conditioner camper and running the microwave and a few things, I think it does really good, you know, on a 15,000. Um, but when you start getting up to the, you know, the two air conditioners, and that's why most of your campers with two air conditioners are 50 amp, you know. Um, so one of the things that I have that I really wish Predator would do is even on their big inverter here, the 9500, is it only has a 30 amp plug. They didn't give you a 50 amp, you know. You have a lot of extra power you can use. Same thing with this one, you know. I would say with that one at 30 amps, there's not a lot of excessive power past that 30 amps. Um, the generator does really well with one. Like I said on two, it just doesn't. And you know, when I peaked this one up to 32, 33 amps, it did not blow the circuit breaker. You know, when I peaked that one right to 31, 32, it popped the circuit breaker, it couldn't pull the load, you could hear it struggling a little bit. Now this one has a little bit bigger motor, it's the 5000, so it has that little bit more, right? And for the weight and the price point, you know, having the dual fuel, a um, couple extra features, you know, um, I, this would be my choice. Um, the Predator 5000 today has proven to me, again, that, that uh, it's a really good generator. My 3500 is actually loaned out. I would have brought it out today, too, and I've done some tests for y'all. And in the, same, in the same sense, on these generators, this one did exactly what this one does, okay? I've got a 30 amp circuit here on this one, too, and I've got the adapter here for 50. I'm going to fire it up for you and I'm going to show you the same thing. This one, it will handle 30 plus amps on this 30 amp, no problem, and even surges. So I want to show you all that and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook this one up and fire it up for you just so you can kind of see that. Now this generator is extremely heavy. It's not as portable. Um, you know, it's going to be a little quieter because you're going to be sitting there running at 30, 40% load running both air conditioners versus this one's going to be running, you know, more 80, 90% load. So um, depending on what size you have, you know, if you're in a permanent spot or if you're traveling, you know, things like that. Of course, this one is a little harder for somebody to pick up and take. It, uh, it takes two people to carry this one or load it up. So um, some pros and cons to both of them, but uh, I really like the Predator line. I think they've done a really good job. I really wish they would give you a 50 amp on uh, some of their larger generators. It would have been amazing to have a 50 amp, you know, make this a dual pole, 240 volt unit um, you know this one's a 110 unit and this one here is a it's a 110 240 30 amp and that's why we get away with a little bit more but I really wish we had a 240 50 amp on this one but uh anyway I'm gonna go ahead and do that test if you haven't done it please hit that like and subscribe it helps make the videos um, but let me get this big one started up for you and uh, let's get that test and I'll show you what I mean all right we've got our valve to on we're gonna go start choke Eco throttles off. Eco throttle on. Again, this is the 9500. It's a bigger generator. You can kind of kick it up. We'll go straight to 30 amps. See the difference we hit 4600 watts out of that generator it does not care literally pulling 4720 out of it but that's the difference between your 240 30 amp As you can tell, the 9500 is not like the 3500 and the 5000. You know, if you're looking for a really quiet generator, you know, it's not near as quiet. On the exhaust side, it's pretty loud. Of course, we do have it fully loaded. The 5000 watt did kind of the same thing. You know, it, it literally showed us that it will go a little past the 30 amp mark. Um, of course, this big one here does too, but the others just do not. They throw the circuit breaker, the engines are overloaded. So, anyway, something to think about. Please hit that like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.